Hey, welcome to Taylor's Drug Taking Table. I'm Taylor, and again, it's community on the channel, so community-focused video, specifically Ray May, so about Chris Ray games. We're covering February, or Feb February, where it's a Chris Ray game that has kind of area majority and trick-taking. But before we do that, I did want to talk about how last video for the pen, we were asking about what what's a trick-taking game to you? How would you define it? And it was cool, because because people did very interesting uh, ranges of definitions, right? Whether they were kind of all-encompassing, because the trick-taking genre and mechanism is kind of all-encompassing. So it was like a little more broad, like someone plays something to the table and someone might win and someone might take part or all of the trick back to them, you know? To like more definitions that were like tautological, where if people called it a trick-taking game, it kind of is. <laughs> that classic Supreme Court justice, I, I'll know it when I see it, uh, <laughs> approach, which is also Amazing. So really interesting kind of fun things to dive into for for that comment section. And I don't know who is going to win the pin yet. I got to work that out just a little bit. But next thing we're giving away, moving right on, is Plotter's Ink. It's a remake of Mitlist und Tuck, which is one of my favorite games. We have a video for that on the channel. And it's a great kind of segue because the Japanese version of Mitlist und Tuck is by Sai Beppu. And in fact, a ton of the games we're giving away or by Sai Beppu. So we've covered designers and stores on the community month, but I thought we'd cover artists in the community. And so Sai is just an absolutely amazing artist. Her art just brings everything that it touches to life. <laughs> um, and in fact, this channel, To Life Also, the, the thumbnail, I think, is from Sai. This wonderful, beautiful, oh, gush, gushable picture is, is from her. She just does amazing artwork. And what's funny is actually earlier this morning, her and I kind of had a fun interview on Twitter about um, kind of trick-taking and, you know, growing up and, and where she's at in Japan, trick-taking versus like U.S. trick-taking, kind of like a really fun deep dive interview. It, I don't think it's recorded anywhere, but maybe some enlightening things coming out of it will be on the next video. Anyway, yeah, so put into your comments maybe your favorite trick-taking art, because I think... Oh my gosh, like some of this art is just so good. I mean, I have like yokai up that here also, which just has like wonderfully beautiful art. And I think uh, trick taking has come a long way from being a numbers and <laughs> suits, numbers and colors games to uh, having kind of eye popping, pull people to the table level of artwork. So yeah, put into the comments your favorite uh, art on a uh, trick taking game or artist and We'll give away plotters, which again, I think is one of my favorite trick-taking games. So, whew, ha, whew, let's talk. Whew, let's talk about February, February. So the hook is, it's very majority where the players are playing over a calendar, and it's a calendar of February. So it has four weeks and seven, you know, days of the week. And if you win a trick, you get to put your marker on that day. But there's two of each day in the deck. So if someone wins with that day later on, they'll actually overwrite you. And you just want the more, you, you just want most of the, <laughs> you want the majority. Ay, ay, ay. You want the majority of your markers on the row or the column, because that's how you get points. Really cool concept. Let's go to the table and I'll show you how to play. The deck in February is made up of 28 days in February, doubled. So day and night, for all the days in February. And as you can see, the suits are kind of the different weeks in February. So this is one through seven, this is eight through 14, 16 through 21, and then 22 through 28. There are also two special cards that come into play in the second round of the game, depending on the player count. The game of February is two rounds. And for the first round, you use the 56 day cards. They'll be shuffled and dealt out evenly to all the players with any extra set aside. You won't be using these special cards until the second round, so set those aside for now. You'll also need a calendar, which I kind of put up in the top right here. We'll have a digital calendar for now, and 15 markers in each player kind of color, or just to denote who the players are. And that is also going to be used digitally. So up here we're going to have kind of the game board in a sense, which again is just the February calendar. So the leader of the first trick is to the left of the dealer. Let's say it's this thumbs up most improved calendar person and so they're going to play a card to the trick and february is a must follow game but you can follow one of two things you can either follow the week 
that was played that was led to the trick. So in this case, since this was a three, it's part of the one through seven week, so the first week. And it's kind of this salmon color here, this square, as you can see. So this player, Dexter over here, can play any one of these, or you can play any of the specific day. So this is a Tuesday, and so they can play any Tuesday. So they can play like this Tuesday here. And you can even play the exact same day because again, each day is in the deck twice. So that's daytime and this is nighttime. So maybe they do play that. And then maybe the heart here plays this. So the winner of the trick is whoever played the later date on the calendar. If you've ever played the same day and it was the highest, like in this case here, this Tuesday and this Tuesday were both played to the trick and they have the highest, then it is the nighttime one because it's the later in the day. So the winner of the trick is gonna place their marker on the calendar here and they're gonna replace any marker that was there because there could be markers that were there earlier. Then you're going to take this card and just remove it out of the game, but you're gonna take the cards that didn't win and set those aside because this is gonna be part of the deck for later. So this card right here would just go out, out of the game, but these would be kind of set aside to be shuffled in later. The winner of the trick would lead to the next trick and maybe Dexter plays this. And if it was later in the round, and let's say this heart person doesn't have any of this triangle or the kind of teens, of the hand and they also didn't have any sundays they can play whatever they want so maybe they play this here and so again the winner of the trick is just whoever played the later date so in this case you know 18 15 and then this is 28 this would win the trick so this player would put a cube or replace any of the cubes on there or tokens with theirs and then again this gets out of the game and these get put into a pile to be set for the next second hand after you play out your hand, there will be some markers on the calendar and there'll be a whole deck ready to be shuffled for the second round of the game. If you're playing with a certain player count, you're going to shuffle in some of these cards depending on that player count. And what these do is it essentially just evens out this deck so that you can deal evenly for the second hand. And what these cards are is, as you can see, they're kind of rainbow and all the suits. They can always follow. They are wilds essentially but they have kind of interesting powers. So reschedule here can never win the trick, but the person who plays it gets to put the marker of the winner on one of the other cards in the trick. So they get kind of decision over where their marker goes. And this right here is a leap year and it always wins the trick no matter what, but it never puts the marker down. So it's kind of just a free way for the person to win the trick. And how it works is depending on the player count, you'll include either zero, one or two of these cards. And if it's one, you just choose which one as a group, kind of which one you want in the deck. But then, so once you do that, let's say you were adding just one, you would take this deck, shuffle it, deal it out to the players, and then you'd play a second hand. And after that's over, then you would go to scoring. So let's zoom in this calendar here to kind of see how scoring works. I didn't quite mention this, but the theme is you're booking events on this popular venue here. So you're trying to get a majority of your events on the calendar. So how the scoring works is you want most of your markers on a week, and on a kind of column. So if you have most of your markers on a week, you're gonna get two points, and there's four kind of weeks here. Ties are broken by whoever has their marker closest to Sunday of that week. And then having most markers on a column or a particular day, like Monday or something, wins you one point, and ties are broken by the earlier date. So you would add up all the week points and all the days of the week points, and whoever has the most wins and ties are broken by whoever of the tied player has their earliest date on the calendar. And that's how to play February. So that is February, and I think this is a really neat game. The concept itself is fascinating. I love the fact that the, the deck makeup is like perfectly day and night of like a calendar, and especially with the two wilds being leap year, super clever to include that, that it always wins. It, it, like, it's just, it's such a clever twist. And then reschedule is such a useful card as well to, to kind of throw these two wrinkles into it that I love, I almost, I like really look forward to that second hand. I like it so much more than the first hand just because it has that kind of interesting wrinkle. And I love games that build and this does that so well. And it's cool to see what players do in the first hand and where the game state is and then play off that in the second hand, you know? I I think the following on either the week or the day of the week, so like, you know, the color or the, uh, it's almost color and suit in a way, which is kind of funny. Like when I, when I splayed it, I would almost look as, look at the 
three letter abbreviation for the day of the week is almost like the suit and then also the the color I, I love that you can have the flexibility in following but it's still it was hard to short suit but it was nice to try to short suit because then you could surprise people if they play like in the teens and you didn't have any teens or wednesdays or whatever you could throw in that surprise 20 right and and, and win because you were so much later i would say that i kind of mentioned it before the second hand is just a more interesting because it has these wilds in them i do almost wish one of the tough things about this game if i had like a criticism or two is that one you can't mitigate a bad hand too much uh like like for example the ones are just like not good like it's hard to win with a one if if impossible maybe <laughs> to win with a one but if if someone just gets dealt a lot of the super high 20s you know it, it's hard to get around that you can kind of make them play it early i think that's part of the what i really like about the game is sometimes you can make someone play something early and then if you have the nighttime version of that come back or even just like the other daytime version is trying to finagle someone to play their version of your card earlier and then coming back and overriding what they they marked that's like my favorite part of this game so so what i'm getting at is like if someone had friday uh the 20th right super strong card and they had you know daytime or nighttime and you had the other one you're trying to play fridays you're trying to play these blue ones to try to make them play that card first and then hold on to this and play this later to kind of like invalidate their use of that card right a pretty strong card and in that kind of wiggling around is interesting and i really like it overall i think you know classic trick taking i think play enough games you can kind of um get over that that luck hump i just do wish because these were so interesting and super balancing which i liked that these were almost included in the first hand but i know that's like kind of tough to do but but anyway i i, I think overall it's a really neat idea and a really clever implement, implementation of both kind of air majorities and the must follow on either color or day of the week. We've seen these a couple couple different ways. We, we covered trick take bird weather, <laughs> which is like a 30 card deck and you can follow suit on either the tens place or the ones place. And that also does this uh, kind of in an interesting way. I think they both do it equally well. And I'd say check those both out if you wanted to see some cool must follow on two different things. We also talked about the deck tet in uh, Gongor Wist, where they each card has two suits. And you can follow either of them. So it's, it's, it's cool when games have an approach and a twist to must follow. I like that. Arguing against myself a little bit, I think the best way this game allows you to mitigate a bad hand is almost to just let someone win with their high cards. And since it is area majority or area kind of control, just stop worrying about what they're winning and, and focus on holding or not getting rid of your stronger cards until later. So what I mean by that is is almost like an example here. I played a game where someone had a really strong hand in the first round and they were winning a bunch on the bottom week. And I was like, ah, shoot, like this is really tough. Uh, but then in the second hand, I was able just to focus on the earlier weeks because the really cool concept of cards being pulled out means, yeah, someone might win the bottom week, but you can anticipate that and just like focus on the earlier weeks which would probably stay in the game or be more important in the second hand later. Uh, again, I don't know if that handles too much of the the toughness of a bad hand, because in the second hand, you could just not get dealt, you know, the third down week or the second down week. Like, you could also just get another bad hand in the second round, which is tough. I, I think I was playing with someone who, who made a good idea of if you could hold cards in between rounds and you didn't play, like, everything out, that'd be cool to kind of, like, balance... The fact that everything gets reshuffled and it's also cool to like maybe have more of a sustained arc between the two hands because it does feel like it's cool that the air majority stay the same but it's tough when you're like working towards something and then like you're out of the hand and you get a randomly dealt hand so you could just again have just another bad hand so that is february really cool way it handles air majorities and i like the two different following suits again a tough hand is just a little bit tough in this game, but I think overall there's some subtleties and some nuance that I think players can get into and navigate to to kind of pull out a win in interesting ways. But yeah, thanks so much for watching.